Join us in this episode as we go all the way up to Pretoria to go fetch this Echo Chobe legend. Welcome back and there you have it, the uh, Echo Chobe legend. This specific caravan was supplied to us by uh, Echo 4x4 Center in Pretoria. Um, and there's, uh, there's a guy called Darren at, uh, at the center. Darren, if you watch this video, thanks a million for all your assistance to help the million WhatsApps before we actually purchase this vehicle. This video is about uh, this caravan, why we chose this caravan and if this caravan is a suitable fit for you. I think there's a lot of good products on the market already. Why I specifically chose this one? Number one feature for me is the color. It's a light color, it's not a dark color. So when you do overlanding and you open in the elements you, you don't want something that attacks the sun and that was one of the, the factors that I kept in mind. The second thing is it comes out with a galvanized sassy and it's, a, it's got a solid axle. I know a lot of you prefer the individual um, axles but I, I prefer the solid axle. If you get stuck um, somewhere in the wilderness then there's always a way how you can fix a solid axle so I've chosen the the solid axle it's got a galvanized sassy solid axle it's light in color and uh, the outer body is made out of glass fiber which is durable it lasts very long um, it's relatively easy to replace panels so I wanted to buy something that's gonna last a very long time for my wife and I and um, and this was our our caravan of choice so this is a four sleeper caravan and the reason why we chose this caravan is because we've got a pretty large family and the combination between this this um, caravan and the rooftop tent on the uh, the GMV Aval PCAs will give us ample room to sleep at least six people another two if we have to in the back of the of the the, the bucket so uh, we kind of sorted out with enough room to sleep it's easy enough enough to, to pitch the tent we'll show you a little bit about about the tent just now and it's nice and sturdy um, after after you've pitched it um, this tent took me on my own about 15 minutes to set up everything for the caravan um, it's really not that big of a hassle it's not that difficult to do it and uh, and that was one of the things that I that I took in consideration when purchasing this vehicle another thing for me that was important was the specifications and for that I'll have to go to my paper to give you the right uh, the right specifications ultimately I looked I narrowed it down to two caravans the Conquer and um, and this specific uh, caravan and yes the difference is between between the two the conquer is about 4.7 meters in length this one is 4.1 so it's a little bit shorter fits into into spaces especially storage spaces at home both are about 1.8 um, meters wide the conquer is a little bit wider um, and the height uh, this one is about um, just over 120 millimeters lower than the than the Conquer. For me, that meant that I will have an easier time towing it 
there will be less fuel uh, consumption to, uh, to the vehicle. It's easier to move around. The Tara, the weight of this um, caravan, 760 um, kilos, while the Conquer is 1380. There's a huge difference of 700, uh, 620 kilograms um, lightweight between the two, the two options. And for me, that combination of a dark body versus extra weight versus that little bit wider um, yeah that didn't uh, that didn't work for me that's why I chose the Joby Legend so in the caravan it comes standard with the cutlery and everything else there's um, a lot of extras that you can add to uh, to the caravan I for instance added the microwave not that we're going to use it every single day this is actually not fitted with a, with an inverter. Um, the caravan comes standard with a 12 volt setup and uh, it's not fitted with 220. The only way you get 220 uh, into the caravan is if you connect it to a, a socket which connects on the, on the outside and you have your 220 plugs on the inside which you can use. Other than that, all the lights, everything else is 12 volt. I did fit a fast charger uh, for cell phones on the outside, uh, a halo plug and uh, a cigarette plug, lighter plug. Just because when I'm living outside, there's ample plugs on the inside, but there's nothing here. So I wanted a plug close by when I'm out of the bay or standing on the outside and I want to connect an extra spotlight or anything else like that. I've got. Uh, a quick enough mechanism to uh, to connect it. Then it comes with a wash, wash basin. It's connected to a water supply. We'll show you the the geyser on the other side. Gas geyser works perfect, brilliant. Um, so you've got hot water, cold water. It's fitted with a 120 liter tank at the bottom. So you've got ample supply of of water. And um, I've installed the extra wooden plank here just to protect everything but there's your gas oven and uh, and that connects to your gas bottles which um, which is the only thing that I don't like about this caravan thus far the the connection point for this oven um, is just on the outside so every time the bottles the gas bottles are stored underneath I'll show you them just now so every time you want to connect either the geyser or the oven you've got to take the gas bottles out remove them from the storage connect them up to the points and then while you camp you have them connected i would have installed a longer hose all the way through to the gas bottles and leave them in place so that you don't have the hassle and i would most probably do that um, pretty shortly so that I, I don't have to remove them all the time that's um, a bit of a downside for me, Toby. Maybe if you, if you guys are, are watching, maybe that's something that you can upgrade on the, on the cavern. But other than that, perfect. There's a door at the, uh, at, the, at the front. It pulls out, so it's it's a it's a great uh, small kitchen that uh, that the wife can use. It comes out um, not with a uh, with with any fits, but you do have the option. To, to purchase a fit, what I chose, I chose the 90 liter uh, National Luna um, fit and um, it's got a, a freezer compartment and it's got a normal fit compa compartment. It works beautifully. <laughs> Obviously we had our challenges. <laughs> the very first time we filled up the water tank and the water tank inlet is just here in this corner. Um, we filled up the water, an uh, airlock developed, it was out like this, and we spilled water all over the, the electronic part of the fits, and the fits cut out. Now, I'm going to leave some contact details down below, a guy called Franz uh, from National Luna. Franz was brilliant, he sits up in Pretoria. One of those guys, you still can call him, 
and he will give you the best advice possible so that you don't have to spend extra money. Franz, thank you much for your assistance. So, the caravan comes out with 17 inch um, tires and um, I asked him to, to take it off, so here's a tip for you. When you purchase your caravan, the very first time you purchase it, you purchase it brand new from the dealer, spend time to think about what you are purchasing and what you want with your caravan. It is most probably the cheapest way to get rid of the stuff that you don't want and to purchase the things you do want on, on your vehicle. So what I asked them to do is I asked them to remove the 17 in wind, uh, wheels and um, I got a discount on the, on the caravan because they removed the, the, the wheels. When I purchased my Aval, the Aval was fitted with 18 inch 265 uh, all-terrain tires um, with these beautiful rims and it was replaced by the dealership before I bought the, the, the Bucky with, um, with black rims um, and these tires that the Aval came out with was left so I took the tires with the vehicle when I purchased it and I bought the three tires up to Pretoria and I asked them to check if it will fit and it fitted very nicely. So I ended up with 18 inch tires on my Chobe caravan and this tires is now exactly the same as what I have on my on my vehicle, on my bucky, on the towing vehicle. So my spare wheel is also exactly the same on the caravan and the spare wheel on my Bucky is also the same. So I've actually got two spare wheels for the caravan or two spare wheels for my Bucky when I'm off-roading because I can change them. They're exactly the same. And that's something that you must really pay attention to. When you do have the opportunity when you purchase your caravan and you can shift out and change a couple of things, then that would be one of the things that you can do because later on it gets expensive to replace your tires. So, so far, works okay. 270 degree awning. Um, I bought it with the with the side walls. I'm not using it at the moment, but I did buy it with the with the side walls so that if we camp somewhere for extended period of times, so we can we can put the side walls up. It folds all the way nicely into the stock pocket, and really easy to to pitch and a lot easier to to break it down and to to put it back into into its bag it's not it's not a not a hassle not an issue i am a relatively tall guy but i think even for shorter people this is not too high it's still you can still reach it so it's not like it's that high like the old caravans you can't reach the top and uh, uh, and you battle to pack everything nice and neatly away this one is fine it works works good good for me so the caravan folds out to the front with the, with the double bed and it folds out on the other side with a double bed. We'll take you around and we'll show you. Um, relatively small door and the steps fold out. You, it folds up when, you, when you're towing um, and you've got your legs that you can jack it up at the back uh, to make it stable and to even it out. There's the, the spare wheel. Um, and it comes with the with the with the bray with it. I'm just waiting for my cover to come for the for the for the wheel. And right at the bottom on the other side, I do have the 220 volt um, inlet. And there's also a nice handy um, cigarette lighter. The back door swings open. It's got ample storage space at the back. It is fine, it works for me. You use all the space that you possibly can. There's a, the, the door, the opening is quite small. It's got these mosquito nets that you can close, which is nice. Um, I like that. I don't like the way you get into the caravan. The back door for me personally is a bit small. And um, I would have loved, I would have loved it to be a slightly different design but it is what it is we work with it there's a nice handle on the inside to gap to gap hold of when you climb out um, and you get the hang of the hang of it quite quick so 
um, by now I'm used to it, it it's fine but um, yeah if I could I would have changed this back door a little bit but other than that brilliant right so on the inside um, there's ample space I'm 1.85 and I've got I've got a lot of headroom when I stand up so um, not a problem to to walk inside uh, the caravan on this side it folds out to make a lovely double bit and um, we use this for the kids when we do have the kids with us we'll fold it out we'll use it if we don't have them with us we'll just leave it closed and we don't we won't use this section ample lights um, on the inside on the front we've got a nice spacious double bit I did fit an extra mattress just a memory foam on top topper on top of the mattress to make it a bit more comfortable and um, I've got more lights at the front and I've got more charging points um, in, in the rear uh, close to the bed so that's a nice touch on the axle in the middle of the caravan they've installed this cleverly this box to house the batteries um, so it sits on the axle uh, it contains both uh, the batteries that I've uh, installed in the caravan and when it comes to your batteries there's some consideration if you have the money you want to spend it by lithium batteries they're the best in this case this caravan does not come with lithium batteries it's a deep cycle uh, heavy duty battery uh, it comes out standard with one battery which is a 74 amp hour battery I've asked them to upgrade the battery remember what I said earlier about saving cost I didn't want to buy a 74 amp hour battery and then I end up being stuck with one and that's not actually what I want so I've, I've upgraded the one 74 amp hour battery for a 105 amp hour battery and I've asked them to install a second 105 amp hour battery so I've got more than enough power uh, in the caravan fitted as it is Charging for the batteries is another thing that you can uh, that you can optimize when you purchase your your caravan. In in my case, what I've done, um, I've asked them to run a cable straight to from the vehicle to charge the batteries while we're traveling. So while we're traveling to our destination, the batteries would always be fully charged from the vehicle from the alternator of the vehicle, and that helps a lot. So that when you get to your destination you know that your batteries are fully charged. So that's the one method of charging it. The second method is, once we plug in the, tw the 220 uh, inlet on the, on the back of the caravan, then it will charge the batteries as well. It will keep it charged. The third thing I did is on the roof, I've installed uh, a 160 watt uh, solar panel. Now, the, this caravan comes out with a charge unit that can that can take a max, maximum of 300 watt at the moment we've got 160 watt they told me it's ample for what i need it is not one of those fold up um uh, solar uh, uh, solar panels it is a proper uh, solar panel we'll take a picture we'll put a picture up for you and um, the reason why i've chosen that one is they are much much more efficient and durable so it's permanently installed on the roof uh, of of the caravan so that is my third way of charging my batteries like now I'm not plugged into uh, the 220 supply I'm also not connected to the vehicle at the moment so so my solar panels are charging my batteries the whole time so when you do purchase your caravan see if you don't have to swap out some of the batteries um, let them take back what they what it comes out with and choose the right battery for your type of caravan don't mix and match try and have the same batteries like in my case i've i've thrown out the 74 amp battery and i've replaced it with two 105 amp batteries so always try and stick to the same type of batteries so that's for the for the battery box nice and close and it it's also a uh, just a small stepping stone to get into into the bed at the top on this side of the vehicle we've got nice storage space it's quite deep 
goes all the way up to the side um, and you can store your clothes or loose items whatever you want to store on the side also a couple of strong points nice clips that's installed so if you want to step uh, one of your tables or anything else that's big when you're traveling then you can step it here um, and it's it's out of the side that leaves the center space open for storage if you have four daughters and one wife you need storage space especially for suitcases and that uh, goes here in the center so this vehicle can carry about I think it's about if roughly about 700 kilos inside um, to get to the maximum GVM load and um, we use this space for that additional storage extra tents that we take with or ground sheets or our chairs or suitcases normally goes in yeah so ample space ample room to the top and uh, yeah so on the right hand side of the vehicle there's a nice storage space on the on the side where i pack everything that i don't use on a day-to-day -day basis also all the uh, attachments that i would need for my shower and then on the inside there's a, a nice handy space for all your ladies your stuff that you want to store when you take a shower because this is the shower it opens up easily takes you two minutes drops down and you have a full shower next to your next to your caravan and in the nose cone there's even more storage the nose cone i use for all my bag equipment i've got two um, i fitted two extra containers in to store all the small stuff and this is the uh, the gas geyser it works very very nice again just the only thing i'm talking about it's got a connection so i've got to take there's another there's an there's another uh, uh, gas bottle at the back i've got to take that off and i've got to connect it here and let it stand the whole time i would have connected this pipe straight onto the bottles i might even do that later but at the moment small things but that's just things I would do to improve the caravan. So, a nice gas geyser. It connects. If you have a look here, there's the taps. Um, you connect the two pipes that I've just showed you on the inside. Straight from here into the gas burner. And, um, and you've got hot water. So, it doesn't matter where you stop. You always have hot water. And, and that's nice to take a nice shower. When this is folded in completely, um, there's a nice storage space on the top of the nose cone where you can put your wood or uh, anything else. At the back of the caravan we've got um, the distribution board in two sections. Top section is our 12 volt uh, input and controls all our, uh, our 12 volt input and outlets. At the bottom section we've got our 220. Uh, and with the with the circuit breakers and everything else that you that you need so that this comes into the caravan from the aft end or the, next to the door at the back and then through the distribution board all the way through one wire to the kitchen area which we've shown earlier so that's how you get your 220 into the vehicle this is also responsible for the charging of your batteries once you are connected to the 220 volt at the top um, 12 volt input so this controls uh, everything that comes from my solar panel controls everything that goes through the batteries it's got my switches um, and it controls uh, the charge that comes from the vehicle when i'm towing the vehicle so at the top at the moment i'm not connected to 220 i'm also not connected to the vehicle i can see my solar panel is charging the in at the moment is five what is it 5.2 amp um just where we stand now next to the next to my house um so without changing or trying to maneuver the caravan i can see exactly what i'm getting in and also the usage so pretty neat system 
to control the, the charging of your batteries and keep them full the whole time. At the bottom of that, we have uh, your fire extinguisher situated close to the, to the panel and also close to the back door, which is nice and convenient. Okay, and that's the Chobi Legend. And this is our entire hick, the one on a budget that we've set up to do overlanding with. The Bucky is still doing good. The caravan has been good in the, the camping that we've done so far. Um, I think now it's time we take it off-road a bit more and we really test the whole rig, the equipment and we bring you updates uh, soon enough on both the vehicle and on the caravan. Hopefully by next week or by the next video we'll have our branding on the, on the vehicle so that you can actually see two for outdoor and the branding uh, that we stand for. So up until the next video, keep safe, keep camping, we'll see you in the next one. With 18 inch 265 um, Kara Rayman will show you a little bit of footage all the way up to Pretoria we went to fetch it and we'll put the camera like a nonsense. <laughs> at some of our other vehicles, uh, some of our other vehicles at my, on my caravan and I have a spare wheel What is it in National Highway you saw? Lakes of Pentagonet So, so when I... On the right hand side, on the left hand side, anything else? Money in law, maybe whatever will fit.